A prominent businessman goes to court today on insider trading charges. I'm Winnie O'Kelly, reporting for Business Day Live. We'll take a look at how shifting gender roles are leading more men <clears throat> to embrace jobs that were traditionally occupied by women. But first, the latest insider trading case tied to the Galleon Group hedge fund begins today in Manhattan. Rajat Gupta, a well-connected executive, is sat on the boards of Goldman Sachs and Procter & Gamble. He is accused of feeding illicit tips to Raj Rajaratnam. Joining me now to talk about the case is Azam Ahmed. Good morning, Azam. Good morning. So this has been quite a long time in the making. Rajaratnam sentenced to several years in prison for his case last year, insider trading. And now we're going to Rajat Gupta, who was once head of McKinsey, had all these connections. What can we expect from this trial? I think this trial is going to be a little bit different. The, um, mm -hmm. the evidence against Raj Rajaratnam was overwhelming. I mean, there, were, there was wiretap after wiretap where mm -hmm. you heard Raj Rajaratnam talking explicitly about impending deals, mm -hmm. about purchasing in stocks, even about ways to hide the purchases he was making. Mm -hmm. With Rajat, the, the evidence is a little less stellar. Um, the recordings they have, they don't, the, Rajat Gupta is not on the two primary recordings that are going to potentially mm. be played for jurors. Instead, it's Raj Rajaratnam talking to one of his traders saying, hey, I heard from a guy on the, the board of Goldman Sachs that X is going to happen. But now, wait, there was a, a big ruling last week in which some testimony and some wiretaps are going to be allowed. What are, those going to, what are they going to show for the jurors? That's right. Um, so the big issue was, can they play these recordings that, that mm -hmm. have previously been aired during Mr. Rajaratnam's trial? Mm -hmm. And in those recordings, Raj Rajaratnam is talking to a trader and references a board member of Goldman Sachs. Mm -hmm. Now, because Rajat is not on that call, mm -hmm. The question was, is it hearsay? Is it inadmissible because neither of the people who are on that call are going to be testifying at trial? Mm -hmm. um, a lot of people unsure thought the judge might rule that they were not admissible, but he said if the, if the prosecution can prove a conspiracy, he will admit the tapes. So that could potentially be a game changer for the trial. So among the other things people are going to be really interested in is who's going to testify. There are some big names listed as possible witnesses. Yeah. What do you expect? Um, I, you know, Rajat Gupta was, was I mean, he was a, he was a confidant of the rich and, and mm -hmm. powerful. Mm -hmm. So Lloyd Blankfein is expect he's on the witness list and is expected mm -hmm. to testify. The former CEO of Procter and Gamble, mm -hmm. as well, and a number of Goldman Sachs executives, in addition to Mr. Blankfein, mm -hmm. all of these people who had, well, some of these people who had known uh, or served on boards with Mr. Gupta. Mm -hmm. So one of the things the defense is likely to do, I know from what you've been writing, is to say that Goldman was just deceived. There were all kinds of people leaking. Uh, how, how is that going to play out? So Gary Naftalis, who is uh, Rajat Gupta's defense lawyer, has already mm -hmm. sort of indicated that you know they have the wrong man. Prosecutors are prosecuting the wrong guy. Mm -hmm. uh, there are at least two other people, executives at Goldman Sachs, who are under investigation for leaking illicit insider information. Mm -hmm. uh, so the defense is going to argue it wasn't Rajat Gupta. He never leaked this information. It was these other guys mm -hmm. who was leaking information to Raj Rajaratnam. Whether that defense works or not is, is going to be interesting because the, the one critical tape, I think, that is going to be played is where Mr. Mr. Rajaratnam says, I have a guy on Goldman's board mm. who is telling me these things. Mm -hmm. The other executives were not board members of Goldman Sachs. And so it's a, it's a, there's a distinction there. And with that admitted in a trial, there could be, the defense could face a hurdle. So the prosecutor in this case, he's had a high profile. He's won a lot of applause for what he's done. Uh, how do you think he's approaching this, this trial? I think he would tell you he's approaching it like any other. Uh, Preet Bharara, who has kind of made it his mission mm -hmm. to take on insider trading. In, in some cases, he inherited a lot of what he is now deploying. Mm -hmm. uh, the Galleon investigation, which is, was into Raj Rajaratnam, mm -hmm. was well underway when Mr. Bharara arrived at the office. Mm -hmm. And subsequent to that, they've you know got a conviction on that charge, and now they've charged Mr. Gupta, who is by far and away the most prestigious of the insider trading targets. Mm -hmm. So my, my sense would be this is a really important case for him because it is the biggest target. I mean, this guy, mm -hmm. he wasn't just a hedge fund manager. He wasn't just a Wall Street trader. This guy was a, a global business icon. Mm -hmm. Can we expect more of this? I mean, the SEC, uh, as well as Justice, have been looking into insider trading. Any other developments coming? I, I think you can safely assume that they are going to continue mm -hmm. down this path. Uh, for the last several years, insider trading has been a major focus, and it doesn't seem like that's going to change. Mm -hmm. I think the Justice Department has now a network of sources in the industry that are telling them information, and it gets better each time because they are reaching out to more people and mm -hmm. they know how to do these cases. Now, whether there are diminishing returns to that pursuit is another question, but 
I, I think it's safe to say insider trading is going to be on their radar for a while to come. Wow. Thanks so much for joining us Thanks today. for having me. Over the last decade, men have begun flocking to jobs dominated by women. Shyla Dewan and Shannon Hodge filed this report on so-called pink-collar jobs. I, I kind of cringe at the term male nurse because, uh, you, know, you know, I'm a nurse. You know, it just so happens that I'm a guy. Registered nurse Kevin Kaiser is one of a growing number of men who now don the pink collar. They say these jobs are stable, challenging, and often a better fit. I enjoy the complexity of the patients. Uh, I like the flexibility. Um, I basically create my own schedule. We are seeing now men gravitate into areas that they weren't so um, anxious to get into before. Neonatal, so a, a lot of male nurses are now in pediatrics. And that's when I've been a nurse for 40 years, that is definitely a change. Now we see a lot of men in pink collar jobs. And there are a couple of reasons for that. Um, one is that those are the jobs that are growing. Gilarducci is a behavioral economist who researches workforce issues. Also, the jobs for women um, that women dominate are in such high demand that the pay is increasing. My pay is premium, my benefits are premium, I get subsidized housing across the street. The increase in pay and benefits has been uh, uh, tremendous over the years. Uh, that's one of the reasons I don't understand why more men aren't in this. Thirty years ago, Ryan was one of the few men who chose to face the social stigma associated with women's work. When I first started in nursing, um, the culture of nursing was much, much different. If a physician walked into the nurse's station, the nurses were expected to stand up and let that physician sit down. Now, for a, a guy doing that, you know, um, not used to uh, uh, sort of demurring to someone else, that was difficult for me to do. I think young men are. Um, aren't saddled with the kind of sexism that older men are, that working along, that women aren't their equals, and that working with a woman or even being supervised by a woman would be demeaning. I see different kinds of guys now. Now you see guys that you'd meet in a neighborhood bar, the guy who was doing uh, an engineer's job or something, and I do see people with degrees in other fields. One of the reasons why it's so important from an economist's point of view that occupations are integrated is because it makes the economy more efficient. We economists have been talking about that from day one, that if you have artificial barriers to a job, then you don't have people getting the best matches. I mean, you can go out and bang, on a, a, bang a hammer on the side of a building if you want to, or you can sit down and shuffle paper, talk to people on the telephone, trying to sell them insurance, but you're not going to feel good at the end of the day like you do with this job. That's all for today. Please stay with us online at nytimes.com for our continuing coverage of this and other stories. I'm Winnie O'Kelly, reporting for Business Day Live. Thanks for watching.